Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views, live on The Media Speaks. Now, for those of you that don't know, we're doing this um, live on a regular basis. For those of you that cannot tune in live, and it is 4.35 in the morning, 5.23.2013, it will always be posted on The Correct Views, as it has always been. So don't panic. Um, it's also going to, of course, now be on The Media Speaks. Uh, there's a high-def version on my, and uh, you go to theirs, you can see it live. What an awesome trade-off. The Media Speaks is growing by leaps and bounds. The entire show today, I got like 130-some hits in no time at all on the Fukushima show. You guys kind of like sometimes when all the stories tie together. The trouble is, when I do that, a lot of times I'll miss very important stories in order to make all my stories tie together. That's why I don't like to do that a whole lot. Because it's more important for me to give you really good information than it is to tie all the stories into a bundle. However, I was able to do so on this one. So please hit share galore. Please subscribe if you, if you haven't already. Um, everything today is on global warming lies and um, spying by uh, various uh, agencies and whatnot. We'll get to it. BBC News, a climate slowdown means extreme rates of warming not as likely. I have been saying forever that man-made global warming is a lie. It is designed for nothing more than to make money from you. That's it. That's all they want to do. And now there is more and more evidence showing that greenhouse gases may actually be cooling the planet, which would imply that they were right in the 70s, although I say that tongue-in-cheek. Um, scientists say that the recent downturn in the rate of global warming will lead to lower temperature rises in the short term. Since 1998, there has been an unexplained standstill in the heating of the Earth's atmosphere. Writing in Nature Geosciences, it says, the researchers say that this will reduce predicted warming in the coming decades. But long term, the expected temperature rises will not alter significantly. They do the best they can to say uh, later on in this article that, well, you know, even though it looks this way now, it's important for you to realize that this doesn't, it's falling apart quickly. The science is now spreading like wildfire that the original estimates were mistaken at best and deliberately misleading at worst, and most likely. Transient nature, climate sensitivity looks to see what would happen if we doubled concentrations of CO2 in the atmosphere and let the earth, oceans, and ice sheets respond to it over several thousand years. Transient climate response is much shorter term calculation, again based on doubling of CO2. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change reported in 07 that the short term temperature rise would most likely be 1 to 3 degrees Celsius, uh, 1.8 to 5.4 Fahrenheit. But in this new analysis, by only including the temperatures from the last decade, the projected range would be 0.09 to 2 degrees Celsius. The, the dirty little secret is the cat is out of the bag here. We've been duped. Well, not me. I never believed in it, but I mean, I've been duped on other things. You've been duped if you believed in this. Global warming debunked. NASA report verifies carbon dioxide actually cools the atmosphere. What's funny about this is NASA is one of the agencies that supported global warming, and now they've released a study that just proves that their own support of global warming is utter hogwash, which is even funnier. Natural News, <clears throat> Ethan A. Huff. Practically everything that you have been told by the mainstream scientific community and the media about the alleged detriments of greenhouse gases and particularly carbon dioxide, appears to be false. According to new data compiled by NASA's Langley Research Center, as it turns out, all of those atmospheric greenhouse gases that Al Gore and all of the other global warming hoaxers, great way to describe them, 
have long claimed are overheating and destroying our planet are actually cooling it based on the latest evidence. This is dated May 22nd, 2013. As reported in Principia Scientific International, PSI, Martin Malzahn, Manzak, not so good with foreign names, M-L-Y-N-C-Z-A-K, and his colleagues over at NASA tracked infrared emissions from the Earth's upper atmosphere during and following a recent solar storm that took place between March 8th and 10th. What they found was that the vast majority of energy released from the Sun during this immense colossal mass ejection, CME, was <clears throat> or cor coronal mass ejection, my, my fault there, was reflected back up into space rather than deposited into the Earth, Earth's lower atmosphere. It had the opposite effect when it actually was shown. And like we're coming, we're facing, we're looking at the CME here. These aren't small. These are huge, huge uh, bursts that come from the sun. The result was an overall cooling effect that completely contradicts claims made by NASA's own climatology division that greenhouse gases are a cause of global warming, as illustrated by data collected using sounding of the atmosphere using a broadband emission radio imagery called SABER, both carbon dioxide and nitric oxide, which are abundant in the Earth's upper atmosphere, greenhouse gases, reflect heating energy rather than absorb it. That means, for you Usher fans, sends it away. The heat escapes when the CO2 goes up. Carbon dioxide and nitric oxide are natural thermostats, says James Russell from Hampton University, who was one of the lead investigators in the groundbreaking SABER study. When the upper atmosphere or thermosphere heats up, these molecules try as hard as they can to shed that heat back into space. Almost all heating radiation generated by the sun is blocked from entering lower atmosphere by CO2. People, this global warming thing, the only reason that they're able to still sell this crock to people is because we have a dumbed, dumbed down nation. We have a nation of people that think that Rihanna's lyrics are somehow actually lyrics. We have nine million rock bands that all sound exactly alike on the radio talking about sex. And again, I'm a Lords of Acid fan. And for those of you that don't know, all they ever talk about is sex. The point is, we've reached a, a, a level in our society when that's all there is. There is nothing else but Rihanna and Nickelback sex. If, if ABC and NBC says that global warming is happening, then it must be. <clears throat> and people don't care if it is or not. You take your average person on the street and give them this information, they're going to look at you because they don't really care. They don't really care because they don't understand the amount of money that they are paying now and will be paying in the future based on this lie. And when you try to explain it to them and tell them what Agenda 21 is, they don't have the mental capacity to understand it because they've been listening to Nickelback, Rihanna, sex, sex, sex. What is the solution to this? <clears throat> I wish I knew people. I do know one thing. The more that... You people listening to me, you, you know that there are people that you could reach with this. Reach the most intelligent among us, and by that I mean usually that just involves paying attention. I'm not a rocket scientist here. But, I mean, the average person isn't going to do the kind of studying that I do. They're probably not going to do the kind of studying you do if you're a fan of this show, because it means that you're probably getting the information that I'm giving you and studying it for something else, which is awesome. My point is, we do know a certain number of people that we can reach and that we can affect. Um, my girlfriend was uh, an Obama fan when I met her, and she listened to the information, and she penned in Ron Paul in the last election. We can reach people, and I think we need to on this global warming thing, because it affects people into their pocketbook, 
And that is one of the best ways to find, I, that I've found, to get people to listen. Guys, Nitro slash pack. Go to the mediaspeaks.com and click on Nitro Pack. Um, I cannot quit raving about the prices that are on Nitro Pack. The Life Straw Personal Water Filter is $16.96 on here. I'm finding it for $25, $35 everywhere I look. This is, they're practically giving it away, and that is awesome. I don't know how many of you prep. I, I know most of you probably don't, so I'm going to go to the, some of the stuff that maybe you'll want if you don't prep. A Polar Water Bottle, 24-ounce blue, $9.99. And uh, it, it's free of all the uh, toxins and whatnot are in the water. I'm not going to bore you to death by reading everything here, but I'm telling you, they've got food, they've got prepping equipment, they've got tents, and they've got things you might just want to look into if you're going camping for the weekend. And if you are a prepper, then this is something that you really do want to look at. Nitro Pack, please support them because they are awesome towards the Media Speaks. So go to the Media Speaks, click on their link, and look at what's on this site, friends. You will not be disappointed. <clears throat> All right, guys, spying. Look. That's why I'm wearing this. For those of you that have read the book or seen the movie Clockwork Orange, <clears throat> the way that the, uh, the authorities were using a right to break various laws because the droogs were rotten people. Because they were rotten people, the authorities had the right to do anything they wanted to to most of society. Well, that's what I'm wearing the shirt for, because we're getting into spying news. I did a spying show a while back, and it's it's just on and on and on. I remember when I was a child, my uh, my dad said, we're entering 1984, when the ball dropped. And he said, let's certainly hope it's not like that book. And, you know, of course, we've all read, or at least, if, you know, if, you, if you're somebody who is a uh, Rihanna Nickelback fan, you can see the movie. Uh, it's actually very good. 1984, um, where... Everything in society is run only by the way that the leaders wish it to be run. And any dissident thought is considered a mental illness. And these are things that are actually happening today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work my way through here and address a lot of these spying issues. People, do me a favor. Share this video. Give it to people. Get it out to people. Hit remix on YouTube and it'll put my video on your channel. Please do. Um, Mike Adams, Natural News, government confiscates private records of psychiatrists in chilling Orwellian mental sweep. Now, I'm going to tell you what this is going to do, and it's going to be both good and bad. People are going to be going to psychiatrists a lot less, which I would say is good in terms of them not wanting to get on these medications, which are proving to be more and more toxic. I'm working on a show uh, regarding that, even as we speak. But it's, you know, it, it, the off-the-cuff answer is good. But there are a lot of people who are going through garden variety depressions that now are going to think twice about going to seek help. And uh, who could be blamed at this point? I would say that you probably don't want to go to a psychologist or a psychiatrist unless you're sure that you're going to hurt yourself or somebody else. Because otherwise, you're just going to have your life ruined. The march to tyranny has picked up fierce momentum in the state of New York, where the criminal Cuomo administration is now issuing subpoenas that demand psychiatrists turn over all of their records to the states, reports MLA.com. This is just the first step for the New York government's HIPAA committee, whose sole purpose is to legally obtain and access the private medical records of potentially millions of New York state residents. Regardless of your views on firearms ownership, sub such actions are absolutely chilling. It puts the government in the position of violating doctor-patient confidentiality for the purpose of the state determining who suffers from mental health problems that the state uses to justify almost any action it wishes to take. And the, uh, the DCM that is coming out, which is the Medical Psychiatry Bible, is listing things such as uh, distrust of your government as a mental illness. 
Are you seeing where this is going? It, 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 the new study says that if your uh, child between the ages of 6 to 18 throws a temper tantrum, then he has a mental illness. Once they have diagnosed you with a mental illness, then they can invade your life like this. And the best way to do that is by making everything a mental illness. If you don't believe me, then look at how many mental illnesses have been added to the DCM from the last installment, which I think is four, into this one, which is five. You're going to see that I gave you a correct view. I would not steer you wrong. Once I lose my credibility, I have no listeners. So when I say something, I'm going to give you the truth because I don't want to have no listeners. This is not a gun rights issue, and this is a patient rights issue, it says. If a state government can simply seize all records from all psychiatrists, then it can also use that information to decide whose children to have taken away by Child Protective Services, or who to deny the right to vote by having them labeled mentally incompetent. So, you can go through a bout of depression. Say someone dies, you go through a bout of depression. You go get help. Then, they say that you have a mental disorder, you need to give up your guns. And you make, you know, you say, hey, wait a minute, I'm not going to hurt anybody with them. Well, then, you know, we're going to take the guns out of the house by force. And since we had to use force, we're going to use Child Protective Services, which is the, uh, the equivalent of Nazi child stealing. We're going to use CPS to come and take your kids from you, too. And since you're having all this trouble, there's obviously something wrong with your mind, so you shouldn't vote. All that from a trip to the hospital for depression. And I know a lot about this. My dad it was, it's so weird to say, my dad was a psychiatric nurse. I know how the psychiatry area works. When my uh, wife and I split up for the first time, I remember being, being very happy that my dad was a psychiatric LPN because it was the time in my life that was very difficult for me, and I didn't have to go see a psychiatrist or anything like that. I've never been to one. And you know what? I probably will never go if, God forbid, something that depressing would happen to me again. Uh, thankfully, I think I've learned to cope with such disasters. Thank God. But, I mean, if you do need help, this, this makes you afraid to get help. This is supposed to be America. What is going on here? The ultimate hypocrisy in all of this is that no one is more clinically insane than Cuomo himself, an outright criminal who runs an illegal, unconstitutional, anti-human rights administration engaged in countless crimes against the citizens of New York. At some point, the rest of the nation needs to take some sort of action to free New Yorkers from Cuomo's tyrant who rules them like Kim Jong-un, and that is very true. That's the leader of Korea for you top 40 fans. Your conversations with psychiatrists, psychologists, and therapists are now monitored by the state. An Orwellian, and that's a reference to the guy that wrote 1984, George Orwell, the Orwellian government respects no limits to its power. That's the posture of New York, Connecticut, California, and of course the federal governments as well. In the name of safety and security, two, two words that when you hear together you know you're about to get your rights taken away, these criminals believe that they have the right to confiscate all of your private records from psychiatrists, psychologists, therapists, and even doctors. Not only is this a foot in the door for guns in terms of spying, but this is a way to prevent you from voting, prevent you from raising your kids. This is a mess, and if you people in New York do not shut off your TVs and do something, then you're going, you're going nowhere fast, and you're going to be taking down the rest of the nation with you, because this kind of insanity is going to spread like wildfire once they're allowed to do it in any one state. Forget about one city. One whole state? American Dream, Michael Snyder, the U.S. government is monitoring all phone calls, all emails, and all internet activity. Big Brother is watching everything that you do on the internet and listening to everything that you say on your phone. Every single day in America, the U.S. government intercepts and stores nearly 2 billion emails, phone calls, and other forms of electronic communication. Former NSA employees have come forward and have described exactly what is taking place, and this surveillance activity has been reported by prominent news organizations such as the Washington Post, Fox News, CNN, but nobody seems to get too upset about it. Even if you're not doing anything illegal, 
Do you want the government knowing whether or not you're sexting? I mean, I don't spend all day on my phone, but have I ever sent the beautiful Christelle an X-rated text? What right does anyone have to go through your private things? Even if you're not breaking any laws, sending a dirty text isn't breaking the law. What if someone uh, takes your phone and breaks the law with it, and you have no way to prove it? This is a trap door to hell, is what this is. Either most Americans are not aware of what is really going on, or they live, or they have just accepted it, it says, as part of modern life. But where will this end? Do we really want to live in a dystopian Big Brother society where the government literally reads every single thing that we write and listens to every single thing that we say? Is that what the future of America is going to look like? If so, what do you think our founding fathers would have said about it? If you believe in the founding fathers, according to the DSM, you're a nutcase. Many Americans may not realize, but nothing that you say, nothing that you say or do on your cell phone or the internet will ever be private again. According to the Washington Post, the NSA intercepts and stores an astounding amount of information every single day. Every day, collection systems at the National Security Agency intercept and store 1.7 billion emails, phone calls, and other types of communication. The NSA sorts a fraction of those into 70 separate databases. This should be what outrages, causes the outrage among everyone. The judges have ruled that because you have your cell phone, that you don't have any right to privacy. I'd like to see if I can find that real quick. Because that is another major issue, that just because you have a cell phone on you, that means that you have to know that you've, you're being tracked and you should just accept it. That says you should shut your phone off in order not to be tracked. I say take their advice. Anytime you're not getting a call, shut your phone off. Now, I've heard in some phones that doesn't work. Um, again, I'm not one of those Apple iPhone people. You, you people that are on your phone all the time don't make any sense to me. I use it when I have to. I get off of it. But, I don't know. If, you, if nobody cares about it, then it makes you wonder, why don't you care about it? What do you do on your phone? And most people are on their phone a whole lot more than I am. What if, uh, you know, what if you're making a phone call that you want to remain private for purposes that are your own. You should have that right. That right's been given to you in the Constitution and you've fallen asleep while they're taking it away. EFF.org automated license plate readers threaten our privacy. Law enforcement agencies are increasingly using sophisticated cameras called automated license plate readers or A ALPR to scan and record the license plates of millions of cars across the country, these cameras mounted on top of patrol cars and on city streets can scan up to 1,800 license plates per minute, day or night, allowing one squad car to record more than 14,000 plates during the course of a single shift. Well, that's great. That means that if anybody hacks into this system, or if a cop just decides he wants to become a stalker. And again, I'm not saying cops are stalkers. I'm saying some cops become stalkers. Some psychiatrists become stalkers. Some ditch, do you get the point? Anybody can. Statistically, some cops will. That's all I'm saying. Anybody that can find any way to get their hands on this will know how you go to work, when you go to work, who you went to work with. This is a great idea. That's great. I, 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 where, where, are, where are all the crazies that say, you know, uh, Eminem's new video glorifies rape. Why don't you people go after the real things that could get you raped like this? Photographing a single license plate one time on a public city street may not seem problematic, but when that data is put into a database combined with other scans of that same plate on other city streets and stored forever, it can become very revealing. Information about your location over time can show not only where you live and work, but your political and religious beliefs. Of course, the IRS was just asking churches what they prayed about. Nobody cared, so why would you worry about that, right? Your social and sexual habits. Again, privacy. The 
government wants to know who you sleep in with, and they can figure it out this way. And if they don't want to know such things, makes you wonder why they're doing it. Your visits to the doctor, your associations with others. Also, even if they don't want to know what your sexual habits were, you think any hackers work? You think you can blackmail anybody with any of this information, maybe? Just a chance? And according to recent research reported in Nature, it's possible to identify 95% of individuals with as few as four randomly selected geospatial data points, location plus time, making location data the ultimate biometric identifier, making it another step towards making not only the government more in control of us and the authorities, but making us less safe and secure, making it more likely that our homes will be broken into and that our lives will be disrupted. That's what it's doing. APRs are often touted as an easy way to find stolen cars. The system checks a scanned plate against a database of stolen or wanted cars and can instantly identify a hit, allowing officers to set up a sting to recover the car and catch the thief. <clears throat> but even when there is no match in the database and no reason to think that a car is stolen or involved in a crime, police keep the data. Oh, but it's just to find stolen cars, Sam. According to the LA Weekly, LAPD and LASD gather at together already have collected more than 160 billion data points. License place plus time, date, and exact location in the greater LA area. That's more than 20 hits for each of the more than 7 million vehicles registered in LA County. That's a ton of data, but it's not all. Law enforcement also officers also have access to private databases containing hundreds of millions of plates and other coordinates. In light of privacy concerns, and this is very important, I like this paragraph, states including Maine, New Jersey, and Virginia have limited the use of L ALPRs, and New Hampshire has banned them outright. God bless New Hampshire. Even the International Association of Chiefs of Police has issued a report recognizing that the recording driving habits could raise First Amendment concerns. Could? Because cameras could record vehicles parked at addiction, at addiction counseling meetings, doctor's offices, health clinics, or even staging areas of political protests. Very true. So guys, I've given you the information. To fight it, to share the video. That's going to help. i got one more story for you here. This is from InfoWars. Steve Jolly. Australian activists defeat spy cameras in landmark case. i got some good news for you. Freedom strikes back down under CCTV breaks Australian privacy law. Cameras switched off. Expansion of the global surveillance grid was dealt a major blow in Australia last week after a legal challenge by an individual against the state of New South Wales brought about a landmark ruling. I am so happy. I'm like beaming. I'm never going to get through this story without my face breaking from a smile. A local resident opposed to the introduction of CCTV, that's closed circuit television cameras, that little cameras you see everywhere, successfully proved, proved that public surveillance carried out by his city council not only broke Australia's privacy laws, but also did nothing to prevent crime, the supposed reason for the installation. This important ruling effectively challenges the legality of public space in CCTV in New South Wales and sets a highly significant precedent for far-reaching consequences across the state and potential implications for the rest of Australia. They might be doing some BS there regarding the vaccinations in Australia, but I'll tell you one thing for sure. They have this right. Very correct view. The legal decision announced on May 2nd, 2013 by an Administrative Decisions Tribunal for the state of New South Wales ruled that the council is to refrain from any conduct or action in the contravention of an information protection principle or a privacy code of practice. I'm going to explain that in a minute. And the council is to render a written apology to the applicant for the breaches and advise him of the steps to be taken by the council to remove the possibility of similar breaches in the future. That means they got to take them down and the court ordered the, the, uh, the city to apologize to the person who won the case. 
The tribunal also ruled that the expert evidence suggests that CCTV does little to prevent crime and that the council has not demonstrated that filming people in the Nora CBD is reasonably necessary to prevent crime. It also found that since the council's CCTV program was implemented, crime has increased in the Nora CDB, C CBD in the categories of assaults, break-ins, enters, and malicious damages. So it's not working! Full details of the injunction can be found here, and there's a link to it at the site. Proved. Proved. A, a regular guy. He's just a normal man. He said he was just reading the newspaper. And uh, look what he did. He, he won a victory such as America hasn't seen in decades. This man is a hero. Adam Bonner. The man who took the council to court is not a lawyer or a seasoned campaigner, but a local farmer, a dumb farmer, a farmer just kicked your ass, who simply acted on his principles. This is what he said. I love this man. For many years, even before I started this whole action back in 09, I had always, 09, took him all that time to beat it. I had always believed in a free and fair society that a person should have to consent to have their personal information collected and stored by the state. God bless him! That is the most correct view of all time, uh, valuing our anonymity. So now the states, of course, you know, and I'm going to be uh, saying about how much, uh, how much it's going to hurt and how much you know, not being able to spy on every move that's made there is going to increase crime. I already proved that that's not the case. So people, if they can do it down under, we can do it here in the United States of America. Thank you for listening to The Correct Views. Also, hope you watched it live on The Media Speaks. Go to TheMediaSpeaks.com. Also, please, all of you who pray, pray for Dana Mobley, Chris. She's the lady who runs the Charity Connection. And I mentioned my dad died. She actually tried to uh, help him get to Germany so that he could be treated and cured. And unfortunately, he was never healthy enough for the, the, the uh, flight. Well, the woman that tried to do that for my family now has lung cancer herself, and she's having surgery. So uh, please pray for her. Please donate to the Charity Connection if you can. And thanks for listening to The Correct Views. If you can donate to me, please do, because all the money you give me goes to a better show. Good night, friends. God bless.